Thank you so much for the introduction. Thank you, Gertrude, for having me here. Um, I really enjoyed yesterday and today it's going to be fun. We'll see how we go with this. So today I really want to talk about reinventing your professional identity at, at work. So that's kind of like the title for it. And um, I want to start by actually asking you a question, which is how do you really identify yourself professionally when you walk into rooms and you have to introduce yourself? What do you say to them? How do you introduce yourself? Do you only limit who you are at work to just your professional title and just occupy your box in the organization chart? If you are, then you're leaving a lot on the table. And if you have a business as well, and you don't have that introduction really the way you think about yourself, your identity really clear and accurate, you're probably repelling more clients and more customers that you could be having in your business. But I'm gonna really talk about how this fitting into work, you know, from a professional perspective. And I'm gonna share a story that would lead us into the, into the um, conversation today. So there I was at work, I was trying to fit into the box that was created for me. And I didn't even know the full description of the box and still did not know how to negotiate or navigate it. It was 10 years ago, I was trying to fit in into a role that didn't fit with who I really was. I mean, to paint the vivid picture clearly, to paint a vivid picture, I was, I was doing my PhD, I was in the last stage of doing my, completing my PhD. And I was at a creative stage. I thought it was a transformational stage for myself. But I, here was I trying to fit in into a role as well that only needed my transactional skills. It was so transactional that it was conflicting and there was no alignment because I spent nine to five trying to solve transactional stuff and then a couple of hours trying to be creative. And there was a tension right there, trying to fit in into the professional box the title that, don't, that didn't fit was created for me. Who said I had to fit in into the box? I did. My boss said that. The organization I worked for said that. HR said that. But did I really need to fit into the box? Did you, do you really need to fit into that box? Because when that box was created, it had none of my agreement with it. I was only contracted to fit into the box. And I'm not saying you don't work for organizations, that's not what I'm saying. But I want you to really listen to what I'm saying. What I'm saying is for you to consider and listen to the internal conflicts you have about yourself, if you have them, when you're at work. The internal conflict you're experiencing, which I was experiencing at that time, was a disease for me. So when I say dis-ease, it's dis-ease. But it was there for a reason. It was a feedback to me to say to me that what I was doing wasn't working or it wasn't working as well as I would like it to. And so it's very important to pay attention to the internal conflicts, to the dis-ease we have about ourselves in whatever role you find yourself. Because the beginning of power, the beginning of freedom is being authentic with yourself. You see, if you continue to ignore it, you continue to pretend and the disease continues, it becomes bigger. And you become diseased. And then you're looking for others to treat you and you're craving for people to treat you as the disease. And you need to understand that you are not a disease. You're not a disease, right? But rather, you, there is a disease you're feeling, you're experiencing, that you need to pay attention to. And when you pay attention to it, you start to realign. 
this diseased conflict and you start to really walk through the conflict and move towards a space of ease. And what I'm saying re really is that there is a reason why the box is not fitting you because your professional identity, the way you identify yourself right now is not just what you do. It's not just limited to what you do. It's who you are. See, when you ask someone, what do they do? They answer back with, I am question. The question was, what do you do? The answer is, I am question. Because the I am question speaks to your identity, which informs who you are being. And what you do is a result of your identity. But I get it because we've all been socialized into a system that really focuses on the abs, the doing, as opposed to the being. And this conversation right now here is to actually look at the equation that we have right now and really realign that from just from, from, from being the do, from doing, having, and being being the last to actually starting with a being. It's the being that informs the doing, that informs the having. And so when you use that to redefine who you really are, to rediscover who you are for yourself, those internal conflicts that I talked about earlier start to dissipate. So coming back to the notion of professional identity, your identity, your professional identity is not just what you do. It comes from who you are. It's a result of the different roles you hold, but it unfolds in your story. You know the stories you created about the roles you hold? You created about who you are at work, who you're not at work? You're simply not your job and you can redefine that identity. When you understand that the narratives you've constructed about yourself right now are perhaps the narratives that are holding you back from what you want to be in life. And you understand that it's the being that informs the doing that informs the having. You can now start to create the life that you really want and the results you really want. There is power in examining your current professional identity, how you identify yourself at work and re reconstructing it in a way that serves you and serves your mission and purpose. So the titles we hold and the positions we occupy in the various companies we choose to work for or the companies we've created should not just define our capabilities, potentials and possibilities. These boxes and titles do not define our achievements they do not define our job duties. They do not define our talents, our energy, our passion. We define the experience we want to create. We define the energy and the enthusiasm we want to input in our work. You define you. And stop allowing the world, stop allowing the programming around you to define you. Start to really define who you are for yourself. And the question I want to end with is, who are you for yourself? Who are you in your world? And who are you for others? I'm gonna be hosting a webinar on reinventing yourself in a couple of weeks. If you're interested, um, you can send me a DM on my uh, Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn. And I'll be happy to um, you know, bring you on board for the webinar as well. And the website to contact me on is reinventyourcourse.com. But thank you very much. I hope that has fired you up to really know that you are a being and your being influences your doing and your doing influences your having. Thank you.